Ten years ago, the BBC premiered The Hour, the greatest 12 hours of television you'll ever see. But before we begin, if you are new here, I would love it if you could subscribe. I make videos all about pop culture just like this one that I know you'll love. So yes, indeed, on July 19th, 2011, The Hour made its debut. It's a 1950s newsroom drama set at the heart of the BBC. It stars Romola Garay as Belle Rowley, the producer of the BBC's first ever topical news show. Our second in command is Ben Whishaw's Freddie Lyon, the man on the scene who fights for the underdog. Whilst Dominic West's prim and proper Hexa Madden is roped in to be the presenter, chosen purely for his looks and to get the show rating. And it's a tale of producing this groundbreaking show. It's about the people behind the scenes fighting the powers that be to let them air the stories they know deserve the airtime. Five. Four. Three, two, one. It's about a murder mystery and a sex ring. It's about government corruption and the Suez Canal crisis. It's about challenging the status quo and fighting for what you believe in. It's about secrets and love and lust and desire and it is perfect. Welcome on board, comrade. From the stellar cast to the impeccable set design and attention to detail. To Abby Morgan's award-winning writing, everything about the hour is just amazing. It has to be the hour that you can't miss. The hour you have to see. And to even pick just a few highlights is kind of hard, honestly. For starters, one of the recurring storylines in the show is an affair between Belle and Hector. And Hector's wife, Marnie, played by Una Chaplin, handles it like a pro. She's very much your picture-perfect 1950s housewife. She grins and smiles through even the hardest of times. So when she gets wind of her husband's misdoings, you can just see in her eyes that she breaks. Do you love him at all? I love him. Warts and all, that's me, that's what I do. And then there's the moment where Spoiler alert, Peter Capaldi's head of news character Randall discovers that his long lost daughter has actually died. Killed with both her parents um, in an air raid. That scene is heartbreaking. Even to this day, I get goosebumps watching along. See Capaldi's character go from this very rigorous, structured man to a total mess in the space of about three minutes is mesmerizing. All about the sheer disdain that Freddy has for any sort of rules. He's constantly butting heads with the powers that be and fighting for what he knows is right. If we cannot debate that which troubles our society, I want it off. We are not a free. And he's the perfect disruptor. His characterization almost feels modern. His inquisitiveness, his fight for justice is relatable despite the fact that he's from an entirely different culture. You came into my house and you frightened my father. So what you do? And the show isn't afraid of tackling some of those taboo subjects. The fact that Belle is a woman is in and of itself controversial, but then the show also deals with sexuality and race and rape and murder and a whole world of issues. You think you live in a democracy? You think this country stands for freedom of speech? It does not. It gives you a real insight into what life must have genuinely been like in the 50s. And then there's the ending. That cliffhanger. You see Freddy lying there, dripping with blood, looking Sorry, like he's about so to die is heartbreaking enough. And then Belle starts to read a letter that she never 
sent him through floods of tears and watching along I was just an emotional wreck. So instead I'm sending this prayer out there just hoping that somehow you'll know to come home just please come home now soon. It feels like it's all over you do not know if he lives or if he dies and then it ends and it never it never returned and for me that's what hurts the most about the hour it was originally intended as a free series arc so we know there are more stories to be told we know there is an ending but it wasn't to be. The BBC axed it before the producers could give it a proper send-off. And honestly, all these years later, a bit of me hasn't forgiven them for that. There is some good news, however. Every so often the cast and crew do talk about reviving the show and setting it in the 1960s. So you never know, cross your fingers, we could be seeing more of Freddy and the gang. But what about you, humble viewer? Did you watch The Hour back in the day or has this retrospective inspired you to give it a go? Let me know down below in the comments. As always, if you like that one, please don't forget to leave it a thumbs up and click subscribe for more. My next video will probably be something to do with the Eurovision, but I have got a few TV reviews lined up as well. And if you do want to keep watching, just click the links on screen now.